I'm going to uh, share with you what I feel that God's put on my heart tonight. I'm going to start uh, by reading a scripture in the book of Revelation, uh, Revelation 4. And I'm going to read this scripture, and I don't want to take it out of its context, but I want to use this scripture um, as a scriptural illustration and a visual for what I feel that God is saying to us and to the body of Christ right now where we are in this place. I'm going to read this scripture from the Message Bible. And this is John speaking, and he says here, Then I looked, and oh, a door opened into heaven. The trumpet voice, the first voice in my vision, called out, Ascend and enter, and I will show you what is to happen next. Isn't that interesting? I will show you what is to come next. And we see in these scriptures when John accessed that door, we see the very next thing he says is, was immediately I was in the Spirit. Immediately I was in the Spirit. And in the Spirit, John began to see and to hear things that he wasn't able to see and hear before this moment. He had accessed the realm of the presence of God and received a revelation that he needed for the time he was in and also for the time he was moving into. Amen. And I believe one thing tonight that God is saying to the body of Christ. It is time for us to access the presence of God on a whole new level. We are going to have to come into that realm of the Spirit where we are seeing and we are hearing by the Spirit. Not just so we can jump and shout in church and have good church services, but so that we can be equipped with revelation. Revelation, not just for what God is doing, but for what he's about to do next. Because we're about to move into it. I believe that. I was thinking this week about the dream that I had about the Red River Meeting House. And I'm not going to tell that dream. Most probably all of you probably heard that dream. If you have it, you can find it somewhere online, I'm sure. But in this dream, there were certain points of it this week that God just really began to highlight to me that I think are important for what God's saying here tonight and to the ecclesia right now. In the dream, I was on the grounds of the Red River Meeting House. And we know this is where the Second Great Awakening took place here in America. That move of God sparked a great move of God into the nation. And there in that location, I saw what I knew in the dream were 100 bald eagles standing on the ground, standing on the ground there at the Red River Meeting House. And I witnessed in this dream that well of that river and that revival anointing being uncapped and re-released into our time. It shot up like a geyser coming up out of the ground, and it began to soak and saturate everything there, including those eagles and myself. And when this began to happen, the voice of God spoke. And this is what God said about that geyser, it's time. And he was meaning to me, and I understood this in the dream, that he meant that there was another move of his spirit that was set on his calendar, his timetable, and it was for our time, and we had entered that time. Amen. And then what happened in the dream was there was two hands came down and clapped. And the opening of that well and the clapping of those hands was a signal that was sent to those eagles. And when they heard the sound, the eagles rose to another level right? They came up to another level and it was there the voice of God spoke again. And this time God said, rapid eye movement, my seers are on the move. 
Amen. And those eagles carried that water out from that place with the rolled up pieces of paper and with the arrows in their talons. And they went forth to accomplish the assignments that God had sent them out on. And this is what I believe God wants us to see and is so relevant to us right now is that the reopening of that well and the rising up of the seers, the eagles coming to another level of seeing is what set everything else into motion in that dream. And I believe this is relevant to us because I believe that God is saying to us, if we will access this door to his presence, God is going to enable us to begin to see and hear what we couldn't see and hear before. And when we start seeing it and we start hearing it, things are going to get set into motion. Amen. Because it's time. Right? That's what he said to us. It's time. I want to read to you a word that the Lord spoke to me a couple of years ago. God reminded me of this word. And when I began to read back over it, it was so amazing how relevant it is to our time right now. And what I believe the Lord is saying to the ecclesia right now. The Lord said, the time has come. There it is again. When I will begin to release through my people what I've been doing in my people. And you will rise to a whole new level of power, demonstration, and operation of my person and my purposes. I'm pulling you out of the place that has been narrow and pressing, and I'm bringing you into the large place. How many can shout for that? Amen. I'm bringing you into a place of seeing and a place of being. It's like waking up to a new day, realizing the old is gone and the new has come. This is your defining moment. This is your place of launching. I am launching you and your orders are forward. I am separating you unto myself. I'm calling you into deeper encounter with me. And from my presence, you will be launched. Listen what he said. My presence is your command center. It's the place of hearing. It's the place of healing and knowing and seeing and receiving. And from my presence, you will be released to release my purposes and my desires. I am ready now to reveal this part of my plan that has long been inside of me. But now it's time. And what has been hidden will now be revealed. No longer concealed inside my heart. Now I will bring it forth. And those who will draw near to me will see and hear and know and be equipped to carry and release their part as I accomplish this part of my plan in the earth. Listen what he said. This is a point of no return. Amen. You will spring forth. I'm thrusting you forward and you will move with clarity and unobstructed vision as you yield yourself to me and make my presence your priority. The page has turned and my plan for forward is being set into motion. Do not look back and do not hold back. Yield yourself to me and I will stretch forth my hand through you to make myself known. Isn't that a powerful word for us right now? I believe what God is saying to the ecclesia right now is it's time for us to rise by the Spirit and have a boldness to access this door of revelation so that we can go to a whole new level with God and receive what God wants us to receive. And then by the work of Holy Spirit that we can go out and initiate 
anticipate what God wants to do in the earth right now. Amen. That's a powerful thing. So God is saying to us, as he said to John, ascend and enter. I believe that's a word for us right now. Ascend and enter. Get up above the chaos. Go through the door of revelation and receive the strategy and the understanding that God is imparting to us. Not just for this time, but for where we're going. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, we're going somewhere. This is an urgent time in the spirit. You can feel it, right? There is a next thing. And there's this knowing that it's time for the next thing to take place. Right? Where it's time. So we've got to be deliberate in our approach to God. We got to be deliberate in our prayer times. We got to be deliberate even in our gatherings together. We've got to be alert in the Spirit of God right now. We must have Him to guide us in this moment that we're in. We have to have Him to guide us to know how to live, how to move, how to conduct our being in this moment. Amen. We've got to be like those eagles. We've been in one place, but now we are beginning to be saturated by the open well of the revival rivers that are flowing again. And God says we need to be like those eagles, that we are attentive to the sound. And when we hear the sound, that means it's time to rise and fly with the assignments that God has given to us. We need to be like those rapid response teams that we're not hesitating in our obedience but we're moving with God quickly to see his will accomplished in the earth it's necessary amen it is necessary for the body of Christ to take their place right now because things are happening it's urgent. You can feel it. I was telling somebody the other day, it's like something is going on in my spirit. I feel it's almost like an unsettledness that I wake up with. I, I wake up in the night feeling it. I wake up praying. There's just this thing. And I told someone the other day, I don't even know how to explain it, but it's like my spirit man knows something that my eyes haven't seen yet. But I know it's time to see it. And so there's this pressing of Holy Spirit who is prompting us, go on over, get on up there in the Spirit so you can hear what the Lord is saying to us. And listen, we cannot assume that we already know. Based on where we've been, we cannot assume that we already know how to move forward with God because we've never passed this way before. It's a different time, right? And so we've got to hear the current strategy and the current revelation that God is giving us and quickly move with it. No hesitation, right? I was thinking today as I was preparing for this meeting and I was thinking about David and I think it's probably in 2 Samuel and there were battles that David would go into and David would go before God and say, God, do I pursue? What do I do? And God would either say pursue or he'd give him a strategy. And there came a time when the Philistines had come up against them and David went before the Lord and he said, do I pursue? And then this time, God said, wait. Wait until you hear the sound of movement in the tops of the trees. But when you hear that sound, he said, move and advance quickly. Circle behind the enemy. Drive them out. And the Lord himself will strike your enemies. Listen, David could have easily went into that battle and said to the people, there's no need to consult God. We've already been in battles with this same group. Let's just use the same strategy we used last time. But instead, David sought the Lord. If he had gone with the wrong strategy, he would have lost the battle. But because he heard the current strategy from the Lord, he was able to come out of that with success and victory. 
Amen. This is a word for us because we can't just assume that we know how to advance forward right now. So we've got to avail ourselves to God in faith and in prayer, listening to him as he directs every step for us right now. And he will do it. And we will be successful as we follow him. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you why this is so important tonight. What I'm telling you is because the only thing that is holding back the forces of hell that have come against this nation right now, the only thing standing in its way is the body of Christ. We're it. And what we've got to get a revelation of right now is that the power and the victory does not belong to hell. The power and the victory belongs to us. Greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world coming against us. So it's time for us to move forward with God's kingdom purposes, advancing the kingdom for God's will to happen in the earth right now. So to go forward, we've got to hear what God is saying now about what he's doing now, but also about what he's doing next so that we are always one step ahead of what hell is trying to do. And we're not just moving about trying to figure out what to do. We already know what to do because we've taken the time to get in the presence of the Lord and hear a word from heaven. Amen. And we advance with that word and we advance with victory. We've got to keep moving, right? It's a journey. And where we've been is where we've been. But our last step is not our next step. Amen. We've got to keep advancing with God. So we've got to keep hearing the Lord. It's over the past couple of weeks It's like every day when I would go to prayer, the Lord would lead me to the book of Joshua. And he would show me and highlight there to me things from the book of Joshua. And I know their circumstances were different than ours and their obstacles were different. But but it's like the atmosphere and the feeling and the emotions of that time are so parallel to where we are right now. And so I was looking in these scriptures and it was like God began to highlight some things to me that I felt were important for the body of Christ where we are right now. And one of the things that God began to show to me in these scriptures is that when God began to talk to Joshua at the beginning of the book of Joshua, the first thing God talked to him about was Moses. God began to speak to him and his words about Moses were this, Moses is dead. That time is over. That season has passed. We all know that Moses was the one that had initially led the people of God out of Egypt. But that group had gotten into the point of fear. And they had doubted God. And we know that many of them died in that wilderness. But what I I feel that God was saying to Joshua is, remember Moses, because Moses was not a failure. Moses, if he hadn't done what he did, Joshua wouldn't be where he was. And because Moses had obeyed God, Joshua and his generation were now positioned to go in to God's next thing. They were ready to go over. And so I was looking at that and I was like, God, it's because of Moses that Joshua was actually able to take his place with a confident assurance because God had been faithful to Moses And God said to Joshua, just like I was faithful to Moses in his time, I will be faithful to you in your time. It was a testimony of one generation shouting to another generation of the faithfulness of God. And that testimony empowered this young man to step into his place and move forward. 
And I'm like Apostle Tim. I feel God is reminding us of these past moves of God. He's telling us through dreams. He's reminding us through uh, reading in books and hearing sermons of the things that God has done. And God is not saying those things as though we have to go back and try to recreate those things. But he's talking to us as he did to Joshua. And he's saying, now it's your time on the timeline. And your command is go forward. But you can go forward knowing that just like I was with them, I'm going to be with you. And wherever I send you and whatever I direct you to do, you can know that this is not my first rodeo. (laughs) I've been here before and I was with them and got them where they needed to go. And I'll be with you and I'll get you where you need to go and I will give you the victory. Amen. These powerful moves of God that he's reminding us of. They were supernatural things. They were powerful things that transformed lives, transformed cultures. If you read about them, it's amazing. And we honor that and we rejoice in those things. But what we need to understand, those are not just pieces of history. Those are the headwaters of glory rivers that began to flow and God God now is saying, I am reopening the wells to again release those rivers. I'm widening the banks so that the flow will be even greater in your time. And it was those people doing their part in their time that actually made a way for us to be positioned in this moment for God's next thing that he's about to do. And now God's saying to us, it's time for you to step into the river and move with God for his part in his plan in this time. Amen. That's powerful to me. I believe this is one of the things that God was saying to Joshua. Now it's your time. Moses is gone. He had his time. He had his day. But this is your time. And now it's time for you literally to get in the river. And go over to the other side to possess what I desire for you to possess and do now. Amen. Another thing that I started seeing through Joshua is the importance of focus. We've got to stay focused right now. It is so urgent. Forward is our command. His presence, he said, is our command center. So his presence has got to become our priority so that we can stay rightly focused in this day that we're moving into. Amen. Joshua had to understand that what Egypt did, I mean, what Israel did in the past season was they came out of Egypt. But what they were doing now was they were going into the promise. So the next thing had to be that they had to leave where they had been and they had to go over into what God was about to do. Their journey to this point had been a a brutal journey. I mean, we read these stories now on the other side of them from the comforts of our homes and, you know, our easy chairs. And it's easy to uh, armchair quarterback, you know, and look what I would have done. But can you imagine being in that time? I mean, they're out in a wilderness. They don't even have a home They don't know where their food's going to come from. They don't know if they're going to get water. They are totally at the mercy of Moses being able to hear from God. And God to lead them. So their journey had been a rough journey to get them to this place. And they're still in that same wilderness when God comes and starts talking to Joshua. But to Joshua and his generation, now they stood in a moment when God was saying, it's time for you to forget what is behind. It's time for you to get up above your circumstances and start hearing now the strategies and the revelation for where you're going because it's time. And they had to make a quick decision. 
in that moment. Joshua said to them, in three days, we're going over. So they had to make a very quick decision. Will we go forward with God into his kingdom purposes? Or will we circle back around the mountain, back out into the wilderness? But it was time to go in. Right? So to go in was requiring a whole new strategy and a whole new level of faith because now they're not just going into a promise, but to get to the promise, they've got to cross this Jordan that is standing right in front of them. And it's no trickling stream either. I mean, this is a swollen river at flood tide. And so they knew the consequences of circling back around the wilderness was that they would probably die in that wilderness but they also saw the Jordan out in front of them standing between them and where God was taking them so it was a very intense moment that they had to stand there and make a decision will I go or will I stay but when you read these scriptures and I was reading this the other day and it was just like there's this sense of an awareness that Joshua had about him. An awareness that he seemed to understand that the destiny of God had met up with the timing of God. Amen. And knowing that, he understood we have to go forward. So as far as Joshua was concerned, fear was not an option for them. Amen. Joshua rose up and he led those people across that Jordan with a confident knowing that God was with him. He became such a leader that exemplified confidence and trust in God to the point that the people were willing to follow him into a river and trust that there was a way in there somewhere because God had told Joshua there was a way. Amen. And they followed him across that river. It split open by the power of God. And what you need to know is no obstacle standing in front of you is too big for God. There is a way over into what God has promised. And he will show us the way. Amen. They went over that river and that is awesome. Right? It's amazing actually. To think, wouldn't you have loved to have been there that moment and seen the power of God on display? But can I tell you, as amazing as it was, that wasn't the end of the story. Getting across the Jordan was actually the the step that led them into God's next part of the journey. They had to keep going. There were battles they had to fight. There were giants they had to take out. They couldn't stop and rejoice in this great moment. They had to move forward. But to keep moving forward, they had to keep themselves in the presence of God to hear what God was saying as he led them forward. And we must do the same thing. Amen. This past season for all of us has been a brutal season. What led us here tonight has been a brutal season for probably every one of us. And if we pass the microphone, we all could tell our stories about this past year and a half that we have lived through. Many are still feeling the residual effects of the warfare that we've come through. And many are still in the warfare, even right now. Their minds, many people in the body of Christ, and I hear it everywhere I go. So many people are still preoccupied by the shock and awe of the old place that we've been in this past year and a half. And I see them devoting much of their focus and their energy and their prayers just trying to get relief from the grief and trauma of what we've come through. Amen. But in the midst of all of that, something has changed. We've entered a defining moment. And it's not that God is insensitive to our emotions about what we're facing in our nation and in our world right now. It's not that, but it is the timing of God that we have entered into. We're in a new place, and there's movement in the Spirit 
And no matter what is going on around us, God is talking to the ecclesia and he's saying, don't get bogged down by your emotions. You've got to keep moving. You're not there yet. Amen. And there's a next part to this plan. So to the, to the warriors, to the frontline warriors, God is saying it's time for us to rise above the fray and hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us now. And a decision right now has to be made by the body of Christ. Are we going to stay where we've been or are we going to go forward? Who's on the Lord's side? Whom shall I send? Who will go for me? It's the cry of the Lord right now. It's not that he doesn't know about COVID. It's not that he doesn't know about the, uh, the chaos that's happening around us. But what he does know is we have stepped into a moment. We have stepped into a time on the timeline. And God said, I need my ecclesia to rise up and get above the fray and hear the current revelation that I'm giving to you now. This is a moment, and we're in a movement. And I'll tell you, the greatest move we've got to make right now is a move into the presence of the Lord. Got to do it. Amen. Let me read you this word that God spoke to me back at the beginning of August. The Lord said, this is a time of separation. I'm separating you unto myself. And I'm calling you, you. This you, this is not just about the preachers up behind the pulpit. Amen. He's talking to all of us as his body. I am calling you to engage. Today you must decide, will I stay, will I go? I'm calling you off the sidelines, hear him, where you have been comfortable as an uncommitted observer and I'm positioning you on the front lines as an all-in warrior. You have said to me, heal me and I'll go. I say to you, go and you will be healed. The healing is in the going. See my fire that is ignited before you. And as with Moses, so it must be with you. Allow your curiosity to override your comfort, causing you to come near to me. Come close and I'll speak to you. Come close and I'll consume you. I will reveal my plan for forward. I'm not trying to make you comfortable. I'm trying and desiring to make you effective. A burning torch of my glory that lights the way to lead others to me. See, just like with Joshua, so it is with us. The time has come to advance because the destiny of God has again met up with the timing of God. It really has. And we have to decide now what we're going to do. To go forward means we got to go all in for God. Come on, somebody. We've got to go all in. No more of this casual Christianity. Somebody's got to get a backbone and stand up with the word of the Lord and be bold enough to declare what thus says the Lord. Move with his assignments. Follow his leading. Trust him. He's trustworthy. Amen. Listen, here's the truth. God's plan's going to go forward whether we go with it or don't. God's working his plan. Amen. But what he's doing right now is he's inviting us to go with him. He's inviting us to take our place in his plan. Listen, and I'll tell you again, that's for you too. All of us that are born again, we have a place in the plan of God. Paul said that God has set the members in the body because he knows where you belong. He knows the supply that you have and we all have a supply. We all have a part in the plan of God. This is not just about us upon the stage. It's not about who's got a YouTube channel or who's written a book. This is about all of us. We're not the big deal. God's the big deal. Amen. 
And we all have a place in his plan. But we have to decide if we're going to take our place. But we can do so with the assurance that if we will stay focused on him, if we will make his presence our priority, he will lead us every step of the way. Years ago, God told me a phrase because I'll tell you, I'm not bold by nature. <laughs> I'm not bold, but I'm bold in the spirit because I've understood that God's with me. And it's not about me. It's about him. Right? This life is not our own. We've been bought with a price. And while we're here, we need to do what God put us here to do. Amen. But years ago, the Lord spoke to me this phrase, and it stuck with me all these years. He said to me, real faith takes real courage. <laughs> and real faith and real courage comes from spending time in the presence of God. Where you realize His greatness, and it gives you courage. Where you realize His ability, and it gives you courage. Amen. So we're in a moment now where... God is requiring real faith and real courage. Amen. Boldness to stand up. I love Apostle Tim's boldness when he stands behind here and he leads us and he exhorts us as the body of Christ. We've got to have that kind of boldness right now especially. Amen. And here's, here's something that I realized the other day. For years we have prayed and we shouted about this place where we are now. <laughs> we wrote songs about it. We preached messages about it. We're going over to the other side. <laughs> Woo! And now we got over here and it looks nothing like what we thought it was going to look like. And there's a lot of people now wandering around in a fog of uncertainty. Because they've come into a new place and they're still trying to operate with an old identity. We're trying to operate off of an old momentum. Trying to operate off of an old revelation. Right? And we're in a new place and we're, many are frustrated and full of anxiety because they're in the new place, but they still have an old mindset. And that's why God's saying to us right now, you've got to ascend and enter into my presence. Get above all of that. So you can hear me tell you who you are now. So you can hear me tell you what you're about to do next. Amen. You can't function. I remember years ago, I was a God, I was in a major transition in my life. And I was scared and I didn't want to go and I didn't want to do it. <laughs> you know, how many can relate? Maybe just me. And I didn't want to do it. And I didn't understand why I was so frustrated because the transition was really wonderful. I mean, it was, it was what I had prayed for. It was what I, God had shown me years before, and now it was happening. And so I couldn't understand the frustration. And I was praying one day, and it was like, God, why am I so frustrated in this moment? And God said to me, you're frustrated because you're in a new place trying to operate in an old anointing. It's different now. Right? You're in a different place. So we've got to see different. We've got to think different. Amen. Listen, the land flowing with milk and honey was the promise that got them the courage to come up out of Egypt to begin with. But now the land flowing with milk and honey was not a promise waiting to unfold. Now it was the soil beneath their feet. They were there. They were in it, this thing that God had promised them. But the promise was not that you'll just get there. The promise was you will take the land. You will occupy it as your own. It's my promise to you. It's my gift to you. Now that part of God's plan was unfolding. So they had to hear what God was saying now. They were not in the wilderness, so that strategy didn't work here. They were not crossing the Jordan, so that strategy wasn't for here. They had to hear from a different perspective. Hear the word of the Lord to us tonight. This is where we are. And we've got to hear from a different perspective. 
It's not that what was behind us was unimportant or unnecessary. It's not that everybody behind us did everything wrong and now we're here and going to do everything right. It's not that. It's just that that is over. It served its time. It did what it was supposed to do in its time. And it actually positioned us for this time. But this is not that. Now we have to hear what God is saying. We have to look forward. We have to see forward. We have to hear what heaven is saying to us. It's time to possess the land. Come on. It's time to possess the land. Forward is our command. Amen. And while we're here in this place, we cannot... As the body of Christ, as the ecclesia, we cannot look around us and just look at things as though there's nothing that can be done. And now we just sit back and hope that Jesus comes and takes us all out of here and gets us out of the mess. Listen, Jesus will come and get us one day, I do believe. But while we're here, (laughs) we're here. And we're here as the ecclesia, the governing body of Christ. And Jesus is saying to his church, rise up and be what I built you to be. Don't sit back and cower in your day. Stand up with the authority that I have given you and govern. Be what I've anointed you to be. Amen. Joshua crossed that Jordan because Joshua had an assurance they were going to make it to the other side because God told him he would. Right? And he trusted God. They came into the land of promise because God told them that land was theirs. And regardless of what it looks like and regardless of how big the giants were, Joshua told the people, we're going over there and we're going to take that land. Because it's ours. It doesn't belong to the giants. Come on. And our confidence right now is going to have to be the same. America shall be saved. God said it. Come on somebody. God said it. It's not a cute catchphrase. It's a verdict. And it's a verdict that God made and God intends to fulfill it. He's not late. That's what he said to us. He's with us. He's reminding us of these past moves of the Spirit. So we will look back and see that what he has done, he's going to do that again. And he's going to do it even greater in our time. Amen. So we have to remember what God has said. We can't allow the chaos around us to convince us that it's bigger than God. Because it's not. We can't allow the chaos to convince us that it's bigger than us. Because it's not. God is with us. And if we'll remember what God has said. If we'll hear what God is saying. And stand up and let the word determine how we go forward. We will see the great victory God has promised. Amen. I'm going to read you a dream And then I'm going to wrap this up and we can make some decrees. I want to read you this dream that I had back earlier this year. And it it just goes with what I'm saying to you tonight. In this dream, I was with our team uh, that we had traveled to all these states with. With Dutch leading us. And in this dream, uh, the bulk of our team that had done all those things, we were out in this field and we were riding horses we were all on horseback and it was like a scene from a movie kind of like the movie the patriot you know when they're all there and they're about to go into the battle you know and the the tensions are mounting and they know what's out in front of them that something is there and so they're there rallying the troops Right, It was that kind of a moment in this dream. And Dutch was there and he was praying over us. 
then out from among us, Dr. Don Lynch came riding out. Most of y'all probably know Dr. Don. He's got this great, robust voice. I love his voice. And in the dream, he came out on his uh, horse, and he was making a victory chant. And he was shouting, victory, victory, victory. And he began to weep all of a sudden. And it wasn't like he was sad, but it was like this passion just rose up in him. And he began to declare over us, our victory is secured. And then he held up this silver coin that he was holding. And he said to us, we are not fighting for victory. We are fighting with victory. And he gave each one of us one of those coins in this dream. And I looked at it. And on one side it had a cross. And on the other side it had the liberty bell with a pair of combat boots on this coin. And across both sides of the top of the coin was written in all capital letters the word victory. And Don then returned to our group in this dream. And Dutch then held up that coin. And this is what he said to us. It is time to change the way we've been thinking. Now we are fighting with victory. Victory belongs to Jesus. Amen. Can I tell you tonight? Now we are fighting with victory. Victory is ours. Victory belongs to Jesus. And his victory has become our victory. Amen. The only hope right now for our nation and for the nations of the world is for the ecclesia to stand up awakened and with a confidence in our God that he has given us the victory. Amen. We've got to change the way we've been thinking. We cannot go into this battle out in front of us thinking that we've already lost the fight. Come on, if you think you're already losing, you won't fight right. Isn't that true? You'll be fighting for survival instead of fighting with the knowledge of, I've already won the fight. <laughs> I'm going into a battle that is already preset with victory because Jesus already defeated the devil. So if I stand and we occupy what God told us to occupy, we will emerge out of this thing with that victory that he has promised us. Amen. We are not on the defense trying to get victory. We already got victory. Amen. Amen. So it's time for us to be the ecclesia. Amen. I want you to stand with me because I'm, I'm about to close. Rachel, if you guys want to come, you can. We are called, and I hope you hear me tonight. And I hope you hear more than me. I hope you hear what Holy Spirit is saying. This is such a moment right now. I mean, I feel it. Do others of you feel it? I mean, it's just there. It's like it's just right there. There's something. And God is saying, I want you to be what I made you to be. And we are called and we are equipped to make known the reality of Jesus to the world around us. Not just to create some good church services. It's more than that. Amen. We have to have a powerful impact on our society and on our culture. And the only way we're going to do that is to walk in and carry the glory of God everywhere we go. Amen. I want to read to you something. I haven't thought about this in a long time. But today the Lord reminded me of this. Um, it's a word that Chuck Pierce, actually, I heard him speak this word uh, in a meeting we were in several years ago. And God started talking through Chuck about our gatherings. And in this word that God said, God said to us that he was looking into our meetings. 
Boy, that'll change something, won't it? When we come to church, if we realize God's watching us. He's looking into our meetings. And Chuck said this, prophesied this. He's looking to find those who are willing to gather and to operate in order and alignment with His leading. And over those who are willing to align with Him, there will be an opening of the heavens that will form. And it won't just be heaven coming down to touch earth, but in you, in me, a window will be opened that will cause what is in us to be activated. And when we align with what God is doing in heaven, then through us, heaven can and will invade the earth realm. That is awakening. Amen. And that is what was happening with Joshua there on the shore of that Jordan. God was unlocking the leader that was inside of Joshua that was necessary for where they were and what they were moving into. Amen. And I believe tonight over this place, over us in this room, over those watching us and that will watch us, I believe God is saying there's a door that has been opened to you. And it's not just to bring heaven down to earth, but it is to awaken what I have put inside of you that is necessary for this moment of time that we're in. And I believe if we will access that door of revelation, we're going to find ourselves just like John did over in the Spirit. And we're going to be able to hear what we couldn't hear. And we're going to be able to see what we couldn't see. Amen. So my challenge to you tonight is this. Get up in the Spirit. The door's open. And, and that is not to say that you haven't already been accessing the realms of the Spirit. But what God is saying is, come up higher. Get up above the fray. Get up above the chaos. And let me talk to you about what I'm about to do next in you. And through you, because there is a next thing in you and that God wants to do through you. Amen. So I want you to lift your hands right now. And we're just going to begin to prophesy and declare into this moment. Come on, let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Father, I declare over every person in this room tonight and those that are watching us and those that will watch us. Father, I declare tonight that there is a turning that is happening in them and for them and over them. And they will sense and get an awareness, God, that you are doing something now that is requiring them to go to a whole new level. And Father, I declare right now your church arises. Come on. We declare the ecclesia rises now. And we're not rising with the wrong mindset. We're rising with our minds open to you that you may speak to us. What is your current revelation? What is your current strategy for what we need to do? And we will hear it and we will move with it. We will not delay. We will not hesitate. We will move as your ecclesia into this nation and we will see this nation be everything that you have determined for it to be. We declare the giants that are in our land seeking to intimidate the body of Christ and shut us down in fear. We say the mouths of every one of those giants are being closed and our ears will not hear those words, but we will hear victory, victory, victory. We have the victory. We're not afraid of the giants. And I declare the giants will not have this land. America will be saved. God said it. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And every eye will see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. So Father, I thank you for every door that you are opening for us. 
And I thank you for wisdom. And I thank you for strategy. And God, I declare that we will not hide out on the wrong side of the river. Come on. We're going over. We're taking the land. We're occupying what he said we can have. And we won't stop until we give him everything that he desires to have. Amen. Amen. You want to come and prophesy, decree? As they were singing just a moment ago, I was seeing a curtain rising. It was like those big curtains, you know, in, in our schools when I grew up, and we had those big old curtains, you remember, big heavy curtains. I saw some of those, but it was like they were rising from the floor up. And God was saying to me, the stage is set. And I'm about to reveal the fullness of this defining moment. But know this, if you stay in His presence, you're prepared to step into it and be everything God intends you to be in it and do in it. Amen. Amen. So, Lord, I declare over every one of us here, I declare over o Oasis Church that they're going to the next level. I declare over every person that is gathered here that we will be sent back to our places, our regions, our territories, that we're going back carrying an anointing and a weight of glory that we didn't have when we came in here tonight. But we're going out with it to represent our King well and to serve Him with wisdom and with revelation that makes us successful in every plan and purpose that He has for us us in the days to come in Jesus name Amen I as Gina was just finishing there I begin to hear what John heard in the revelation yes there is certainly a door open but remember what he heard the king said come up higher come up higher Come up higher. I want to show you something. I feel like we are in a holy moment. That if we would press into the presence of the Lord and indeed focus, shut out everything, and come up higher and listen, God's going to speak. He'll speak to you. And while I'd like to get bold and start making decrees and everything, I feel like that's the moment that we are being brought to. And I'm going to ask you to do it, whatever it takes you to do it. Come to the altar or kneel, focused, and go up higher. Let's go into his presence and let's listen to him. He said, would you come up higher? I want to show you some things. Maybe it's been months or years before you had that kind of an encounter. The king has challenged us tonight. He's challenged me. I feel compelled to push into his presence. I want to go there. I want to go there. It's a holy moment. The king says, this is, this is your moment. Would you come up? I want to show you some things. Would you come into my presence? The altar's open. Come and press in. Let's do it. Come on up higher. However you do that. At your... At your in on the floor, in the seats. But let's do it. What an invitation has been given from the king. Oh, to you, Lord. Come into your presence. 